Want to know why? Ask how. Howard the Humongous. Unless, of course, you want to ask me about Syria. What in the world do we do about Syria? This is one of the biggest pickles we've gotten into in a long time. Why is it a pickle? Because President Obama took a committed ethical stand and said, I'm drawing a red line. Chemical weapons use is unacceptable. Cross it and I will crush you like an ant. There's only one small problem. President Obama is not the kind of guy to decisively crush an ant. He's the kind of guy who will think about it for a couple of weeks and then maybe do nothing. And guess what? He's not the only one. There are 300 and roughly 7 million others of us. We're called the American people. And we have a very hard time making up our mind. Why? For very good reasons. First of all, we had a guy in power who crushed ants all over the place. A guy who stomped on sidewalks crushing ants when there wasn't an ant in sight. His name was George Bush. Now, his father was a wise man. Um, he was careful to make sure there was an actually an ant and that he was actually wearing a boot and that he could actually crush it. And when he finished crushing the ant, he walked on and did something else. That's what he did in 1991 when we attacked Saddam Hussein and defeated him in a matter of weeks. Then what did we do? We got the hell out real fast. But not under George Bush Jr. Under George Bush Jr., we went into Afghanistan where the Taliban was, who had just destroyed the World Trade Center in 9-11, and we won. We won real fast. And then what did we do? We hung around. Then we decided to go into Iraq where there was a hotel with a giant mosaic with George Bush, the father's face, so that people could step on it and insult it every day. And though he swears this was not his motivation, I swear it was, at least in part. And we, under George Bush, the son, went back into Iraq. And guess what? We knocked Saddam Hussein out of power in a matter of weeks. And then what did we do? We hung around. Well, we've been battered and bruised in Afghanistan and Iraq for 10 years now. Actually, 12 or 13. And stepping on ants? No, we didn't step on ants. We stepped into the ant hill. And then we stayed there. And guess what the ants did? They've been stinging us ever since. And we've learned a lesson. We don't want to do that again. And we could easily be doing it in Syria. To make matters worse, Médecins Sans Frontières, which is one of the most credible non-governmental organizational sources on planet Earth. It goes out to help people with doctors. It cares about their health. It does not care about the politics. It is neutral. It just wants to do good. And Médecins Sans Frontières in Syria has told us unequivocally there has been a chemical attack. It has killed roughly 300 people. It has injured roughly 1,200 others. We know that attack exists. There's only one small problem. We don't have a clue about who did it. And day after day, the Obama administration is issuing the word that it is about to release the evidence on who did it. That it is about to release an entire timeline of how they did it. But the release of the evidence and the release of the timeline has not happened. It hasn't happened at all. And Obama did something that compromised his credibility. When this all broke loose, 
he said he was convinced that the Syrian regime, Bashar Assad's regime, had done it. And he was going to find the evidence. Well, when you go out to examine evidence, you don't go out with your mind made up already about what the evidence will prove. You go out to look at several different sides of the issue. In this case, did the Free Syrian Army perpetrate the chemical attack? Or did the Assad regime perpetrate the chemical attack? Obama told us from the very beginning that he was going to find one result and one result only, no matter what the evidence was. That seriously undermined his credibility. We do not know who did this. We do not know what the impact would be of a surgical strike. What kind of surgical strike could we affect on Syria that would actually produce a positive result, even a result of warning? But we do need to maintain our stance as a warner. We do need to maintain our stance as a credible authority, the policemen of the world. Everybody expects that of us. Even the people who hate us for it expect that of us. They hate us when we don't act as the policemen of the world, when we don't defend them. We need to be able to draw lines and then make sure that nobody crosses them. Why? This whole war in Syria began because Saudi Arabia and Qatar, the Arab countries, were scared shitless. They were scared shitless because they were surrounded, in their opinion, by Iran and its proxy armies. And Iran was about to take over the entire Muslim world, all 1.8 billion people. There were articles in Asian publications that screamed that it was the end of Islam that it was apocalypse. Why? Because those people in Iran are not Arabs. And those people in Iran are not real Muslims. Real Muslims, in the opinion of the people in Saudi Arabia and Qatar, are Sunni Muslims. Shiite Muslims are apostates, people who have abandoned their religion and gone over to the devil. And guess what? The people in Iran are Shiites, the people who have abandoned real Islam and gone over to the devil, at least in the opinion of the Saudis and the Qataris. It was the end of the world. The people of the devil were about to take over. And in addition to having five proxy armies, Iran had another asset, Syria. And it was the days of the Arab Spring. And the idea was people were being toppled like Mubarak in weeks. And if you took advantage of the Arab Spring and backed the people in the streets, you could topple Bashir Assad, and you could take Syria away from Iran, and you could end Iran's power or seriously cripple it, and the apocalypse, the end of Islam, the end of the only real Islam, Shiite Islam, the end of the Saudis, the end of the Qataris, would not arrive. But it hasn't worked out when using street demonstrators to topple Bashir Assad didn't work, the Saudis and the Qataris gave the people in the streets weapons. When those weapons did not topple Bashir Assad, they gave them more weapons. Some of those weapons began to spill into the hands of people who hate the rulers of Saudi Arabia and Qatar, the people of Al-Qaeda, their own kids. These are largely Saudis the people of Al-Qaeda. Now Al-Qaeda have the weapons. Now Al-Qaeda have their own independent state. It's called the Emirate of the Levant and Iraq. Um, And they, any weapons that the Qataris and the Saudis are giving to the people in the streets are ending up in the hands of Al-Qaeda. The Al-Qaeda of Iraq and Syria, things are getting very complicated, boys and girls. But it's all a war in reality against Iran. It is all a proxy war against Iran. So when we draw a line, who's reading the degree of our determination and resolve? Not just Bashir Assad, but Iran. Why does Iran matter? Because they're developing a nuclear weapon. 
Now we're being told, oh, if we're just nice to them and if we just have conversations with them, if we just negotiate and use diplomacy, there's nothing to worry about from Iran. Well, I've been reading the Irani press and I've been reading, remember, I appear on Iranian television on a fairly regular basis and it is sometimes frightening to discover what they believe. And I've been reading the comments from the readers in the Iranian press. And those readers are bloodthirsty to use an attack on Syria to destroy the United States. To utterly destroy the United States. Yes, to destroy Israel. They want to destroy the Jews. They're basically Nazis at heart. They think that uh, Jews are responsible for every single problem in the world. If your milk goes sour in your refrigerator, it's the fucking Jews. If you lose that $5 bill you were holding on to for subway fare, it's the fucking Jews. Destroy the Jews and you solve all the world's problems. But hey, that's not the only enemy as far as they're concerned. You gotta destroy the Jews and you gotta destroy the United States. And the enthusiasm for using an attack on Syria to utterly womp, stomp, and eliminate the United States of America is intense. Absolutely intense. If these people get their hands on a nuclear weapon, you are in mortal danger. And they are very specific that it's an alliance that's going to wipe you out. It's an alliance that includes the Russians, the Chinese, the Syrians, and the North Koreans. And guess who's been testing their first nuclear weapons? And guess who's launched their first multi-stage anti, anti or transcontinental, multi-continental ballistic missile specifically designed? They have announced it. They announced it when they launched it to reach the United States of America with nuclear weapons. That's Iran's ally in doing what? In wiping out the United States of America. And if you think anyone sane is in charge of the North Korean government, which is like that with the Iranian government, look at the fact that today the dictator of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, had a dozen people rounded up for making what the government called pornographic videos and had them machine-gunned in front of an audience of their families. And the leading person in that group that was machine gunned was a major pop star in North Korea who had been guess whose girlfriend since he was a teenager. Kim Jong-un's The Dictators. Is this the kind of guy you want aiming a nuclear weapon down your trachea? with the encouragement of his great allies in North Korea? Is this the kind of group it calls itself the axis, calls us the axis of evil? Is this the kind of group you want to think that we don't have red lines and that if we do draw red lines, we don't enforce them? Because what do people do with somebody who looks weak? What do bullies do? with someone who looks weak. They beat the shit out of him. And the fist with which beating is going to be done in the next 10 years is nuclear. And it's going to be in the hands of the North Koreans and the Iranians. So you have to enforce a red line. Not stupidly, Sometimes you have to do it cleverly, like the Stuxnet virus that wiped out Iran's ability to refine uranium for a few weeks. Sometimes you have to go outside the box. It's not always a tomahawk missile. In this case, you have to do something to eradicate the chemical weapons facilities of Iran, I mean of Syria, because chemical weapons is what this is all about in order to send a message to Iran and to North Korea that you are not somebody's girlfriend and you cannot be lined up in front of a wall and shot with a machine gun.
that's it. This is Howard the Humongous talking to you from the future that it's your responsibility to make. And while you're at it, watch me on the Howard Bloom YouTube channel.